Tip. It's P. Samples. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn, the founder and content curator for the Real Talk Session Series. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Uh, reminder, Love Mike Nia Foundation fundraiser on April 4th. This is Thursday, 5 p.m. at Delta's. They have Love Mike Nia martinis they'll be selling that night, which go directly to the scholarship fund. Uh, more information at lovemikenia.org. But today I have my first out-of-state guest from Wilmington, Delaware. And thank you, Lock Nation Salon, for housing me. But I'm going to introduce you to my frat brother, Malcolm. Yo, what's up? What's up, Taryn? What up? Thank hey, you what's going me. on, brother? Yes. Appreciate you. And I appreciate you and your time. So Yo, he younger than me, but he my profile. We're going to leave, we're gonna leave that alone. It's now. all good, though. <laughs> but I'm the better looking one of the two. You know? <laughs> but yeah, uh, so this man has been doing entrepreneurial stuff for years. Right. Definitely somebody I look up to. So right. salute appreciate to you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I don't know everything you do. Right. So I good. need you to tell everybody what you do because you do some amazing work. Definitely. Yeah, appreciate you. Um, So uh, just to give you a little bit of context, you know, so when we lead it, lead further into the conversation, um, back in 2008, graduated from Seton Hall with my chemistry degree. Um, 2009, I got to a point where I was like, ah, am I going to do corporate America or whatnot? And uh, I came to the point where I'm like, yeah, uh, I don't know if I could wear braids or if I was going to cut my hair. I wasn't trying yeah. to cut my hair. So um, Mecca's mom, shout out to Mecca's mom. Uh, shout out to Mecca and Mecca's mom. Yeah, shout out to Mecca and Mecca's mom. But uh, she was like, yo, why don't you go get your hair twisted? And um, I, me and Mecca, we literally, I put her in the stroller um, and we walked all the way down to South Orange Avenue. This little African lady was like, yeah, I'll twist your hair, whatever, whatever. So she twisted my hair and that's when my journey into locks and entrepreneurship like it started right right then and there okay so so small little random moment evolved into something way bigger absolutely so let's go into your background of being a black chemist mm -hmm. who has locks mm -hmm. i only know two black chemists you're one of those <laughs> so you know that's definitely something new so like what do you do as a black chemist and what has your experience been having locks because recently they had the uh legal ban saying that it's uh, that employees are allowed to not hire people with locks. Right. So that plays a big role. So right. Absolutely. Know, and I, and I think I think that 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 legal ban was BS. But mm -hmm. that's a whole nother conversation yeah. for another day. But uh, me personally, working in you know in, in pharmaceuticals, that's because that's what I was doing doing a lot of R and D with the pharmaceutical industry. You know, Sanofi of Venice, uh, Merck. I worked at Sharon Powell for a little bit of time. Um, I, I've gotten a, a couple, I got a couple different type of reactions when it came to my locks. Like the white people, they would be like, oh my God, is that your yeah. hair? Like, did it come out of your hair? Oh, like, it's, touching your hair yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, don't, don't touch my hair. Like they feel yeah. entitled uh -huh. to come in and touch my hair. Like, no, like I don't want none of your bad juju on my hair. So, um, yeah, you know, but I've never gotten like a ill type of, um, like ill type of comment from um somebody of a of another race um and i haven't really gotten an ill type of comment from black people it was just more so since we were trying to assimilate in terms mm -hmm. of um you know going up the corporate ladder and getting jobs and whatnot you know you gotta uh play the game in order to beat the game yeah. so um you know a lot of um a black people was like yo maybe you should cut your hair you know because you want to get a job and you want to make money and whatnot so you might want to consider cutting your hair and um i never did i never did cut my hair because this is a part of me and that's how i was really starting to get strong in the in that foundational feeling of this is me and this is who i am mm. and i'm not going i don't have to listen to you in order to really get to where i want to get to so um that's how that's been my experience in terms of um corporate america but I know for black women, it's a whole different, it's a yeah. whole different ball game. So but for black men, it's one thing for black women, it's a whole different ball game. But that's for me personally, that's been my experience. Yeah. And people really need to hear about the different experiences that you Absolutely. have because people have a tendency not to believe stuff unless it's in their face. Absolutely. And they have a tendency not to believe reliable sources. Absolutely. So we have Malcolm here. Mm, I'm telling Pay you. Pay attention to the man. I'm telling you. <laughs> It's something that needs to be changed, and it's not fair at all. It's not. It grows naturally from my hair. So Absolutely. Why not? Absolutely. It go, it grows naturally out of my head. So how? Why would you ban something that grows completely natural and free from 
out of your body like that doesn't yep. make any sense to me so uh, you know when people of other ethnicities you know they want to put all these constraints on the way that you need to be naturally that doesn't make any sense to me you know like i said i could really go into mm. into that in depth yeah. but that's a, another conversation for another day yeah, <laughs> so one thing that i, I definitely uh, i like and i admired that you turned uh, you created your company, used your background as a chemist to create Isle of Mecca Absolutely. in dedication to your daughter, uh -huh. natural hair products and yep. whatnot. So really, tell us about how you came to that evolution of the point of, hey, let me go ahead and create this company. Yeah, so to give you a little context on that too. So for a long time, mm -hmm. I was really like on the fence about school. I was really like down in school and college and whatnot. Yeah. But I then, conversations. Yeah, you, yeah, we've had these conversations. Yeah. So I actually taken a step back from that. Whereas like if you're in a space where you understand what it is that you want to do and you know your purpose, college can actually help you to fulfill your purpose as yeah. long as you use college that way. Because there are yeah. a bunch of people who haven't went to school and they're fulfilling their purpose. But there's a whole bunch of people who did go to school, did go that route, and they are, they're, they're, they're fulfilling their purpose as well. You know, it's a whole bunch of different perspectives mm -hmm. in terms of this whole college thing. But, you know, just to go back to give you a little perspective. Let me pause them real quick. I will be talking about why degrees are not necessary. Ooh, that's coming not. in a whole different Ooh, show. They're not. So yeah, they're not sure, necessary. Sure. They're not necessary. Um, right. But for me, in my journey, and that's why I like to talk about it, because I see both sides of the fence. Um, for me, my chemistry degree from Seton Hall just helped me to have a lot of credibility in terms of what I do with my hair products. So yeah. with Isla Mecca and me formulating my own products, you know, if I was just a regular kitchen chemist that just YouTubed it, that would be one thing. And there yeah. are some credible people who've done that. But I actually went to school, did the work, and I can break these chemicals down mm -hmm. a lot more fluently than a kitchen chemist that got their stuff from YouTube University. Yeah. Not saying that they can't. Nothing wrong with it. Not, nothing, nothing wrong but with it. But you have to have the, the credentials behind if you're trying right. to do something bigger sometimes. Right, right, right. You know, sometimes you need the you need those credentials or you need a, a whole bunch of experience. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was just in this position where I had enough experience and I had the credentials to help me formulate my products. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, or like you said, Isla Mecca is dedicated to my daughter. Mecca, that's my, my daughter. And uh, my dad was really the one that pushed me to formulate these products. You know, they're sulfate-free, no parabens. Okay. Um, they're vegan, you know, and that's really big in this in this culture that we live in, in terms of holistic lifestyles and fitness and whatnot. So, you know, I'm glad that I was able to create something that, you know, the people, the people could use on a daily basis. Look out for it. It's going to come in the future. Definitely. I, he, he's a very knowledgeable and passionate <laughs> dude. So it's going to be something big. Yeah, it is. But now, now on to like your baby along with, your, your, with Stanley, uh -huh. the one thing that y'all built from the mud, Live yeah, Nation. The mud. So the guy with the, with the shirt in the back. Yeah, y'all see, he, he ain't want to be in the camera because his hair not done. Y'all see, I'm yeah. getting my hair done. He doing his hair <laughs> afterwards. So, um, yeah, yeah. This, this, my, this my man, 100 grand, okay. um, Stan. So, just to you know, just give y'all some. I like I like to give context and substance when I when I'm when I'm on camera. Okay. Um. So what happened is back in 2012, and I'm very transparent. Um. Back in 2012, I was working for a Siemens Healthcare Diagnostics at the time, and um, I had messed up um on this formulation. Oh man, I messed it up bad. Mm -hmm. Like the company had spent like 250 thousand dollars on Ooh. it. So you know. <laughs> Yeah, that guy who messed up, he's not going to be here yeah. anymore. I was that guy. Okay. So um, before, I want to say like a week or two before um, I had got fired, I was like, man, I'm about to create this page because like I don't want to, I don't, it was a lot of crazy stuff that had went on behind me getting fired. Yeah. So I was like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to be in this space no more. So at that point, I was like, man, Lock Nation, this is what I'm going to do. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. And um Stan had literally just started doing my hair and he had a page called Delaware Lockheads. When you do another interview soon, yeah. you can, you know, get get his feedback on that. Look but out for Stan, look out for yeah, Stan. Yeah, look out for Stan later. Um so he had this group called Delaware Lockheads. I was just like, yeah, we might as well and you know, we was like Captain Planet when our powers combined, you yeah. know what I mean? It's one of those type of things. And you know, we've been rocking out ever since. You know, that was that was twenty twelve. It's now uh fast forward twenty nineteen. You sit with over a hundred K yeah, followers. Yeah, we we started literally that's from on zero. IG. What, yeah. what, what, what that's a yeah, on Instagram is we over a hundred uh hundred and twelve thousand on, on Instagram, mm. thirty eight thousand on uh Facebook. But the thing is is me and Stan back in the day, this is how you know this is something real for us because when it was we got 50 likes we was like yo we had 50 yeah. likes 100 we was like yo we was, yeah. we was excited and you know when we got to a thousand it was something different then we got to ten thousand we was like yo this is this is serious we need to 
really start moving forward and really yeah. you know start executing and really doing it so you know it's been it's been a journey for real and it evolved from the web page mm-hmm. the the online presence into uh-huh. a physical store on, which is on, Live yep, Nation's yep. line online online offline and we'll, we'll I'll get back into that too but yeah that the on the online presence meets the offline work and the offline work meets the online presence that's marketing for you yo Ah, yeah, definitely. And going into marketing, this man, he got, he got all the little segues. Yeah, yeah point, I got segues definitely. for days, bro. So, like I said, he's an entrepreneur, and he has a ton of things. So, your last, uh, I guess, business venture, your uh-huh. most recent one, right? Yeah, my most so, recent that one. is uh-huh. uh, Influencers Live Media. Yes, sir. So, tell us about that. Yeah, so, so what had happened was um, back in 2016, I believe, 2016, or it could have been 2017. I, I, I can't remember. But anyway, mm. what happened was that I was I used to go to Delaware Chamber of Commerce meetings and um, I would literally put the whole it was a whole bunch of old white people in there. Yeah. And I would literally take my phone and put everybody on Snapchat. Okay. And uh, they were so intrigued because like Snapchat, I didn't even know that we could use Snapchat. <laughs> What's the Snapchat? So um, on, the, uh, on the Snapchat. Yeah, <laughs> like I got y'all on the Snapchat. So, you know, that started to evolve and people really wanted to have real live conversations about this social media thing and, mm-hmm. you know, helping me to pro- me helping them to promote their events. So one young lady that worked at an IT firm, she was like, hey, Malcolm, we have an event coming up and um, I would like you to help us to promote it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make a little bit of money. So once I really got into it, I was like, oh. I might be a little bit over my head. Yeah. And um, so I got my man, Nudie. He helped me. And, you know, Nudie's been doing event planning and marketing here in the Wilmington area for the last 12, 15 years. So um, Nudie was like, yo, I got you, bro. I'll help you. And, you know, ever since ever since that moment, Nudie's been helping me, you know, do this, do this whole marketing thing. And I've learned a tremendous amount yeah. of you know, just marketing expertise and just how to manage my relationships and, you know, how to move with integrity out here in these streets, you know, from him, my my guy Stanley. But that's how Influencers Lab Media started. Um, And, you know, we've been moving forward ever since. So it seems like a lot of your ventures started with like random moments. Yeah. And you capitalized on those opportunities. Uh So definitely salute to you because people don't recognize those pivotal points right. that can change their lives. Right. You know, I always believe in divine timing and God speaks to us in a, a specific way. That's real. Sometimes it's in a very subtle way That's real. and you have to listen. So uh-huh. definitely what, what, what's one of the, I guess, a piece of advice that you would give to an upcoming aspiring entrepreneur? Um, I was actually just having this conversation the other day. Just do it. Literally, just do it. That's facts. What 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 happens is that so many people get caught up in trying to do it a certain type of way mm. that they don't do it at all. Or so many people try to dot their I's and cross their T's. Not yeah. saying that that's a bad thing. You know, measure 10 times, cut once. That's a quote from my man Stanley. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I've, I've been the guy who's always been like, all right, I'm about to just do it. You know, I build the plane while I'm flying it. Some people, you know, they put their schematics and all that stuff down, and, like, then they start to build the plane. But so experience is always the best teacher. You know yeah. what I mean? So I, I tell people all the time, like, if you got that idea, you got that product you want to get out there, you got this dream, whatever it is that you want to do, we live in a, a world and a time where you can do it anything's the possible in, the internet changed the world mm-hmm. so you know there's no longer i have to there's no longer six degrees of separation i can literally go to that person go to that entity or i can become that entity yeah. so literally there's no excuses for you to just do it just start i tell people all the time just start make small goals and climb to your bigger goals you know okay. what i mean yep so i think that you know success stories are good absolutely but people need to hear about those tough times when you want to quit facts so tell us about a time where you said man i don't know if this is for me you know right right well there it was a it was a couple of tough times um i had got um i had got in trouble and um i literally was forced to lose time so when you're forced to lose time there's nothing that you can do to get time back yeah so literally that shifted my mindset in terms of how i'm uh, how I'm maneuvering out in the streets mm-hmm. and um, because when i had found out that i was about to lose all this time yeah. i was like oh man yo like i ain't promised tomorrow yo like for real nice. i'm i am not promised tomorrow and a lot of people around me was losing time like that like mm-hmm. that like that so i really put into my mind where listen i need to move with integrity i need to move you know i need to treat my relationships good i need to um the way i manage my money and things of that nature i had just had to do everything on the up and up in the right way um that was one thing that really 
made me I, I questioned a lot of things. I had a lot of self doubt on the inside. Plus I was broke. I had no money. Yeah. So, you know, when you had when you're questioning yourself, you got self doubt and you don't have any money. Like mm-hmm. there's one thing to have self doubt and you got a whole lot of money. It's a whole nother situation where you have self doubt and you don't have any money. Um and you know you're depending on people in order to just make it through day by day. Yeah. I was in that space and um being in that space just teaches you to be humble. It teaches mm-hmm. you to be humble. It teaches you to move with humility. Um, it also taught, like I said, for me, it taught me to move with integrity because yeah. there was a lot of moments where I wasn't doing that. And now I can say on camera that that's the way that I do operate and operate in that way is the best way all the time. Yeah. So, and that, that's, that's something like valuable lessons that you learned. You yeah, know. super valuable. Yeah, so learn from this man. Fact, don't, let, don't let life teach you the hard way. Yeah, because it's whack. Yeah. It's whack, yo. And especially like for me, I, I really had to learn a lot of things the hard way mm-hmm. too. So... Mm-hmm. People had gave me advice. I ain't listen because I thought I knew everything. Knew everything right. You know? Right. So, like, what, what's like probably the most valuable advice that you have been given? I've been given so much valuable advice over the years. Um, like, what's the one thing that sticks out to you the most? Um, I don't want to necessarily say that it was like advice. Mm. Um, it it came more through seeing. Um, my grandfather was a hustler, yo. Like, my grandfather was a super hustler. Um, he would get up early in the morning and detail cars. Um, he would get up early in the morning, you know, cook breakfast for my grandma, um, you know. And then later on in life, as his health started to deteriorate, I started to understand a lot of the things and the reason why he, he did a lot of stuff. So, you know, I don't want to necessarily say it was somebody who gave me good advice. I, I learned a lot through watching. Observing, you know, yeah. my, gran- my grandfather, he was one prime example of um, – just doing what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? For your family, uh, for the people that's around you. My pops, the same thing, you know. I didn't understand what they were doing when I was when I was smaller in terms of, yo, my dad, he was gone all the time, right? Mm-hmm. I, I tell people this story all the time. Like, my dad was there. He was in my life, but my dad was always gone. Yeah. And I didn't understand until I started to live that same life. You know what I mean? So with that being said now i understand a a different layer of balance Mm. because my dad was he was always gone he was gigging because he got a band he was working um, full time so like i said i learned through watching okay and that's where my advice came through my advice came through watching so being that it's women's history month you know we gotta salute to all of our black women out salute there. to all of them all the women i love i love i love my black women yes. i love them i love them so who's a black woman that you look up to and why <sighs> who's a black woman that i look up to and why that's a good man that's a good 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 question um i, I don't want to make it sound like it's like cliche but um i just paid attention to the way Karen Seville moves. Yeah. Um, she moves. Ah, man, she moves. She's calculated. Yo, she's super calculated. Super calculated in the way that she moves. Um, yo, um, Oprah is like a beast. People don't understand the things that Oprah has done and the things that Oprah's went through mm-hmm. in order for her to get where she's at. And yeah. for her to be a black woman and one of the most uh, wealthiest and one of the most powerful black women in this world that we live in right now, like, that's that's inspiration, bro. Um, Karen Seville, Oprah, um, I don't want to, I'm trying to think of somebody who's, like, close to me. Um my, my matter of fact, my home girl, um, Shanika Perry. Shout out to my home girl, Shanika Perry. Um, she's the uh, executive minister over at Bethel AME Church right. here in Wilmington, Delaware. But um, she has literally, I've seen her hustle through so many situations, and I've seen her, you know, navigate a political, a, a politically charged system, and you know, that's really not for black people, especially black women. You know, yeah. black black men have struggles, but black women have their struggles as well. Yeah. And for me to see the way that she maneuvered, the way that she moved with a certain type of grace, you know, that's that was very inspiring to me, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm glad that I had a person like that in my life. All right. All right, so it's time for us to wrap up whatnot. It's been a pleasure having you here. Yeah, I appreciate you for having me. So bro. please tell the people how they can reach you. Okay, so I have multiple. I got a. It's going to be at the end of the video. Too, yeah, I'm about he, to he say I got a, I got a bunch. I got a bunch of places, but everywhere Malcolm Locks M A L C O L M L O C S Malcolm Locks. Uh, you can reach us also Lock Nation T M. Uh, that's our Instagram page and that's also our Facebook and also Influencers Lab Media. 
Um, you can reach us everywhere, Influencers Lab Media, and then IFL Events. That's our event leg. Mm -hmm. So you can reach us there at IFL Events as well. Okay, perfect. So, so I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thank man. you for coming out. You already know, Well, man. actually, thank you for inviting me. And oh, yeah, 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 shop. yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's a nice little shop. If you're absolutely. here in Wilmington, Delaware, make sure you stop by Lock Nation Salon. Yeah, follow they my guy. You, you can't up. see you can't see him right now, but yeah, new location coming soon. Lock Nation stand. We about to take things to a whole nother level in this hair game. So pay attention. And I'll put the location out once that's uh, settled or whatnot. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Again, yeah. Thank you location. for having me. Appreciate you, bro. So real talk session series. Make sure you connect with us on all different uh, platforms. We're on LinkedIn. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Love Mike Nia Foundation fundraiser Deltas. April 4th and if you need anything please 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 email us thank you for showing love some people have been emailing already so thank you alright so we'll see you next time Road Talk Session Series the revolution will be digitized Road Talk Session Series the revolution will be digitized Road Talk Session Series the revolution will be digitized Road Talk Session Series the revolution will be digitized it's P. Simple, the revolution will be digitized.